today's topic is going to be on reducing effort of um, articulation and also improving the clarity. Um, when you hear people say things like start from the string or engage the string or set the bow, um, for most people uh, the reaction is a sort of forceful kind of, oh, I have to be on the string, to be pressed in, ready to go, and then, you know, sometimes you get that kind of sound, and of course we avoid that, so naturally you start, uh, you go out of the string, and so you're not set into the string, and you're also not completely out of the string, or some, somewhere in between. We want to be engaged in the string, but not forceful, so that's what we're going to try to do. Um, this is very important, not only for ensemble playing, um, you know, like starting together. If everyone's starting from the string, they're going to start together. And if we all have the same idea of articulation, um, we're going to unify our sound. Um, but this is also important in your own playing. You know, if you, if you play for your friends or if you play a concert, um, the way you begin notes is one of the most important things. Like, kind of sets the tone for how that note will go. Um, so, when, when talking about articulation, we have to talk about the bow hold first. It's kind of unavoidable. I can tell you all kinds of things about making sound, but the fundamental thing is how you hold your bow. And I mean, there are different, different schools of doing that, but basically the, the bow hold is centered around the thumb. Um, one way you can kind of uh, test yourself is can you hold the bow with the thumb and the pinky only. Uh, this also tests a round pinky, which is very important for your bow hold. So if you can do this and kind of wave the bow around a little bit, maybe under some carpet at first, and feel like your thumb just has a good um, wedge into the bottom of the, of the stick, you can see that it's curved um, but it's not my nail going into the, into the grip, right? So curved thumb, curved pinky, and feeling that that thumb is supporting the bow. That's number one. Number two, as mentioned, is the pinky, that it should be on the bow most of the time and round. You want this flexibility of the fingers, yeah? Fingers have to be very reactive. Um, they can't be always forcing the bow to do something. In fact, most of the time they're not. Uh, but they're also not stiff, and or or are they totally limp? So they're they're kind of like little flexible, springy things. Um, so that's kind of the basic concept to 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 strive for. Um, now, the next thing we talk about is pronation. Um, so pronation is how we put weight into the stick. And the easiest way to think of this primarily is um, index finger pushes down, thumb pushes up. It's this opposition that creates the force. And the way that this happens, you see the hand kind of rotates a little to assist in that. So actually it's a pronation from the elbow. Pronate, supinate, yeah? Like turning a doorknob. So there's a little bit of that, and there's some finger control here. So while I'm playing, I'm going to do this sometimes. To catch the string or to sustain some sound, I'm going to do that and hold it. Depends on the situation. Um, so with that in mind, the first thing we do to address articulation is talk about something I call the ictus. Um, the ictus, as some of you might know, in conducting is you know when there's an upbeat or some sort of beat, you won't see a good conductor just do this. There's always a little, at the very beginning, a little tick, and that creates that clarity of where the beat is. We want that in our bow stroke as well. So, the difference between and that little articulation is very minimal but you can hear the difference. Uh, and as you're playing different music and in different dynamics, that difference is really magnified uh, and compounded. So what we want to do is 
have our flexible bow hold and find that minimum, just the attack of the note and the minimum amount of pressure, pronation, weight into the stick, the minimum amount that you need to create that. So for me, it would look something like this. I'm using a millimeter of bow for this. You just grab the string and release a little pop. Yeah? At first you might not get it um, and you, you have to kind of force it a bit more. But you want to immediately minimize that. So you're left with that little ictus. And you'll see I'm doing little pushes with the index finger to kind of scoop the string and then pop it up into the string and out. You want to do this in, in this part of the bow because it's the stickiest and kind of the heaviest. So you should feel your round pinky working pretty hard here just to balance the bow. Right? Remember the thumb and the, and the pinky. So you can, if you can actually hold the bow with the thumb and pinky, let's say on A string level or D string level, that means you have good balance. Right? And flat hair as well, very important. If hair is flat, everything will be more balanced. So try finding that ictus on different strings, right? So our arm is nice and high. So we're not flicking the wrist or moving the arm. It's just almost entirely in the fingers. Set, pop, set, pop. See how little it can get until it's lost all clarity. Even if I don't move the bow, if I move it just vertically, it still makes a sound. I can't help but make that sound, and that's your minimum ictus. Okay, so the way, once you get that feeling, you want to be able to implement that into your bow stroke. Um, so there are two strokes that we can practice this with. Um, there's cole and martele. And first we do martele. Martele is um, on the string, and you catch the string, and you release with bow speed, and then you catch it again. Right? So it's an on-the-string stroke. Um, so you can practice this in the middle. Catch, release, catch, release. Or in the upper half, catch. Now you can see the stick flexing. That's the index. Right? And under no circumstance do you want to tense up your hand to get that uh, pronation. Right? Remember, it's the ictus. Very small, but articulate. Right? And if you let go, here's another little test. If you put the bow in the middle, let's say on the D string or G, let go of all the fingers except the thumb. Right? That should feel comfortable. That bow should be resting on your thumb and well balanced. If you can do that, then you loosen up, you free up all of these fingers. So the bow is not something you hold, but rather something you balance. Right? And the bow wants to do a lot of things on its own. It wants to go off the string. It wants to be articulate, right? It wants to be heavy, right? So you can let it do all those things without forcing it. So we do this, then we make sure our index thumb pronation feeling is active. Right, we have a little ictus. Add some bow speed as you release. So that's our martillet. So you can do, um, let's take Kreitzer etude number seven. So you can practice first just the ictus, then martillet, and then we'll talk about cole. So the ictus would be
So there's very, very little bow. I'm just doing a little pop with the fingers and changing the string. But immediately I'm stuck to the string afterwards, after every note. slowly with the metronome and once that sort of once those muscles are trained and that those reaction the the reaction times will, will start to short uh, shorten and you'll be able to do this faster um, so that's the first thing you do with Kreitzer 7 then you switch to Martelet so it's ictus plus some bow speed and every time you want to make sure you have you catch the string, but with only enough pressure to produce that ictus. Right, it's all controlled here. Um, so that's the martelet. Then we have collet. So collet is off the string. We've been dealing with on the string stuff. Once all those things start to get more comfortable, we can take this off the string. So collet is done typically in the lower half, and it's going to be one of the most useful strokes for our um, passages in Dvorak and you know just a lot of folk music. It requires that articulation and ease. Um, so Kole looks like this with Kreitzer number seven. So it starts from the string the same way as the martelet, but then when you release, you flick the wrist a little bit and you lift off. It's like ping pong or tennis. You know, as you, if you're going to do a front stroke and then a back stroke, like this kind of motion, as you're doing the front um, swing stroke, you hit the ball and then immediately you're preparing for the back swing. Right? Similarly to this, when I um, release on this up bow, that release is also the beginning of the next stroke, which is the set. So my release is con connected to the set of the next stroke. So I'm releasing into kind of, my hand is going to hover over the next note very close so I could set the bow. Not, you know, just floating in the air and then setting. So one motion. And you can approach the string slowly and then just set the bow right at the last second. Right? And it takes some practice to get good at this. You want to set for a, a little while so you feel Secure and then pop. But eventually, it's like you're approaching and then your fingers and your arm, your hand knows when you've caught the string and you can immediately go. Exaggerating a little bit there. Um, so that's Kole. Uh, let's see. I definitely want to look at some passages with you from Dvorak. Um, let's actually just let's look at some passages, and that'll reveal some other things about these strokes. So right away we have this one. <laughs> And so here's a perfect example of where that ictus and that articulation and the, the collé stroke will come in handy. So, to get that accent, you want to feel very, very much in the string and then immediately pulling the bow this way with the arm, right? 
So it's like 0 to 60 instantly. And if you have that ictus, not pressing too much, but enough to grab the string, you just get a very articulate and full sound immediately. And it's an accented note, and it'll decay on its own. Then, catch the string. It's a kole up bow. So we catch, and we pop. And then we have another kole down bow. So as you're practicing this, you want to feel like your hand is like a homing device. It's always looking for the string via the fingers. The fingers are always looking, looking to catch that string with that minimum ictus pressure. Whatever I'm about to play, I'm tracking that string. If you've ever seen um, some like crossover pop violinists, like very good ones, they do this technique called chopping, where it's like... I'm not very good at it, but that's the basic idea, like it's this percussive feeling. And what they're actually very, very good at is setting the bow into the string, be it, albeit a little violently, but that's the correct feeling, it's this release. Right, and the bow is just being pressed into the string with natural weight. Right? So the fingers aren't tense pressing the bow in. Right? And you look at their fingers and you know, their hand is going to be very flexible. So we want a little bit of that. We want 20% of those crazy pop stars. Okay, so that's one example. Um, going on, uh, even simple things like um, so bar, what is that, 19, just starting from the string on these chords. And I'm looking at the first violin part here, but second violin and viola, same thing. Um, so starting those chords, finding that ictus, and then just adding a lot of bow. Everyone, if everyone sets together, and then of course you draw the bow straight. Um, that is going to pay dividends in the sound, uh, especially when the entire section does it together. Let's see, the next thing, okay, here's this. So that's bar 61, 2, 3, 63, it seems. So here we have, here's how you practice this. It's a combination of cole and martile. So first, let's do everything martile. When you're practicing uh, these kind of strokes, try to do everything martile first, everything on the string. You take, you kind of remove certain variables, and then you can focus on articulation. So there's the martile from the string, catch, ictus, relaxed hand, we're pop stars here, and then you just pull with the arm, then we catch, so that's on the string, it's kind of like a, call it the shoe shine stroke, All right, you want to have that pressure but not uh, tensing up the hand, but rather just releasing that pressure with your arm, right? Like you're hanging on it, so. Then these two notes are kole. Um, but as I said, first martile, we practice the martile. Right, so every stroke, you just want to catch the string. And as I mentioned, the follow-through of every stroke is the, you think of it as the set, the setting of the next stroke. Yeah, 
Yeah? Then those two up bows become cole stroke. So you kind of push off this and then lift into the air. It's a very, very small amount of bow, very into the string. Okay, next we have, let's see, some other passages. Um, okay, look, look at bar 213. You have this, this sort of thing. So starting that from the string, very, very important. It's, you know, the main theme of Dvorak, one of the main kind of gestures, and he does it slow and he does it fast. So you can take this passage and practice it very slow. That helps with that tempo and character, but also... that character, which is more articulate and um, in line with what we're talking about with articulation. So from the string, practice it on the string first. These are very short strokes, it's almost like a staccato. But each one, remember you find that ictus, then practice it smooth on the string. The first note is stopped, however. Stop. Now on the string, very little bow, even pressure. That's our detaché. The reason we stop that first note is uh, we want to practice articulating this up bow, even though it's going to be connected later. So what's going to happen is, even though it's connected, it's going to be articulate because you, you, pra you, you exaggerated in the practice um, stage and you played it separate. Now you're giving it this attention. Right, when I connect it, that up bow is never going to be weak just because I've practiced articulating it. Okay, next we have, so we have a similar thing, but in piano, uh, pianissimo, so bar 266, first violin, it's kind of the, um, we have this, so, second violins, and then first violins respond with piano. So it's the same concept, you're just using a lot less bow and less pressure. So this is a great um, opportunity to find the minimum ictus, because it's also going to be very soft pianissimo. Find that. Flexible light fingers. Feel the thumb and the pinky. Effortless. Homing device. It just finds the string. Right, that's all we need. Now we just add a little bit more bow. That's our first note. And then think on the string for the others, even though there are dots. Um, and then it continues. So when you do this up bow, that means set the next stroke, right? There's no time. Otherwise you have you're going to kind of jump, uh, you're going to fall from the air and it's just not going to be clean. So set, set, very minimal. Um, okay, let's look at some other passages. So the stuff we've already 
went over, it repeats many, many times. Like dun, da, 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 dun, da, da. You can practice all that stuff slowly on the string, martelet. If it's forte, practice pianissimo, yeah? Just so you can feel this before you start using a lot of pressure or bow. All the same stuff. Okay, going on, let's see. How about movement two doesn't have very much in particular. Oh, okay, movement three, all this. So that has to start from a string. So if you try to do this ictus in the upper register, you'll see that things are different. The string is very, very short, so we have to move closer to the bridge. Right? But it's the same thing. Relaxed, flexible fingers. Let the fingers find that string. Right? The string is caught. There's our ictus. Add some bow to the ictus, suddenly it's a kind of a nice and short tone. All right, and then you add a little more pressure and a little more bow speed, and suddenly you have, this is, uh, I believe it's forte or fortissimo, and you have the stroke that we need for this. So this is on the string, very, very on the string. Don't try to go. Don't, don't do that. So you can practice these three notes by themselves. Just sustaining that last note with some vibrato. Then these are kode. The same exact thing as our etude. Um, and then it's the same. Cole. On the string. Right, really on the string. Okay. Yeah, and it, it's like, if you watch my hand when I do this, I'm preserving a lot of motion. I'm conserving a lot of energy because of what we talked about with this follow through, that one stroke is kind of blending into the next and I'm conserving momentum. Another way to think of it is like, if you're dribbling a basketball, you know, look at someone that can't dribble a basketball, how are they trying to do it? Well, they start forcing it more, they start hitting the ball essentially, because they're, they're not able to find that groove where the ball pushes up against the hand and you push it back, right? So that's the minimum amount of force you need. This, and you just contribute to the existing uh, nature of the ball. The ball wants to bounce, right? And that's what you realize once you learn how to dribble. And then it's like, I mean, it's like nothing, especially good basketball players, it's like nothing. Um, or if you're pushing someone in a swing, same idea, right? Try forcing it when they're coming at you. Right? It's not going to work. So as you get better at this, as, as the bow is kind of moving in space and you, you feel where it wants to go, where did you propel the bow, and how are you adjusting its motion for the next thing, right? And then you get this efficient sort of movement. Okay, next, let's look at... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, fourth movement, beginning, right? Just from the string. So Christo talks about, you know, the rosin flying there, and it's never enough sound. Well, here's how you have 
more sound. It's not by pressing more, it's by having that foundation, the ictus. It's very, very small. And once you find it, bow pressure and bow speed together in the follow through. stuff is on the string here. Okay, here's a really, really good one to practice. This is kind of an etude all by itself. This, uh... all right, it's written forte, so you can't go this kind of bouncy thing and that plus big sound don't go together. Um, so practice this, as we said before. Uh, first, finding the ictus and setting the bow on every note, and doing this on the string. Every single note, you're looking for that minimal. Homing device, right? Every note, D, dun, dun, dun. That's detaché. Okay, then we go off the string on the eighth notes. Still at the slow tempo. Now it martelet becomes collé. But this is still detaché. Notice I'm using the lower half, about six inches of bow. It's the sweet spot. That's the place in the bow where we can change the stroke most immediately. We can't do it here. Here we're kind of stuck. Everything's going to be kind of on the string, maybe articulate. It's, it takes more force to catch the string here because the bow is heavier here. A lot of the work is done for you if you can balance it. Right? Thumb, pinky. Set. Forte, so you need that marcato sound. Um, then, of course, when it's when it's a piano, then we're going to go off the string um, to the best of our abilities. Let's see if there's any other. Oh, okay, here, um, 184. This stuff. It right, starts pianissimo. This is a perfect opportunity to work on the ictus, right? Minimum. So here we catch the string and we flick the wrist up. And then as we get louder, right, I feel this chopping motion. That's what I'm thinking of. So, going on. Okay. Here's a famous one that will be pretty important um, as an ensemble. Uh, we have bar 210. So we have this. Um, right? All of those have to be from the string. Right? You find that ictus. So you can practice this with a metronome using just an inch of bow, piano with really articulate beginning.
right? You have the eighth notes, you also have the quarters. So here you'll be able to practice kind of different speeds of articulation, the slow follow through, and then also the quick set. Okay, almost done. Let's see what else there is here. Actually, I think that's it. Um, a lot of other stuff is a, re a repeat of what we've already gone over. So, look at Kreitzer number seven. Um, you can use any etude. That one's good because it has these the string crossings. You can use any basic etude um, that'll allow you to do something martile and then colle. Um, not too complicated in the left hand, so you could focus on the right. Um, so watch your bow hold. Try to develop flexible fingers. And control the bow with this, right? This is the boss, right? When you want to set the bow, this finds the string, and it applies the minimum pressure needed. That's our ictus. Always think of the ictus. 